Hi everyone, it is still September 9, 2019, SB 276, SB 714, signed into law today, Governor Newsom. Boy, they are fast when they have an agenda, right? No delays. California Senate voted today on uh, SB 714 passed out of the assembly, got onto Newsom's de desk an hour later, Newsom signs it into law. Yeah. Legislative update. SB 276, introduced by Senator Richard Pan, immunizations, medical exemptions, signed into law today. SB 714, the companion bill with 276 immunizations Richard Pan again signed into law uh, I just came upon this SB 419 Senator Nancy Skinner this signed into law public uh, pupil discipline suspensions willful defiance anybody want to do some research on SB 419 because I don't like the sound of it yes California now, you are officially a medical tyranny state. That's right. And Americans, are you getting now? Because it's quite obvious. It don't matter what you want your representatives you know, to represent. They don't care about you. They don't care about you. They do what they're there to do to fulfill an agenda. This agenda is medical tyranny and Americans, if you haven't recognized that we are a tyranny now, then you never are going to get it. Um, it's very, very upsetting to see this and I can't imagine what all of the parents who have fought against this bill fought against you know the bill the, the, trying to get their assembly to vote it down ah oh, but they voted for it and now they're out please governor newsom don't sign it it is signed into law California lawmakers and staff should be arriving at the state capitol. Protesters moved in. They've come from across California, urging the governor not to sign Senate Bill 276 and a companion bill 714. We are here to fight for our medical freedom. The bills aim to clamp down on school vaccine exemptions. With the bills headed toward the governor's desk, parents, mostly moms, traveled from across the state to protest holding signs and locking arms. Children at their feet, they blocked entrances. I just want my choice. Now the, the narrative is that we're violent, angry terrorists who just don't want to vaccinate our kids. What we need you to do is hold the By 11 a.m., three protesters had been arrested. While access was still available through the north doors, activists remained chained to the south doors and blocked the driveway lawmakers used to access the building. In Sacramento, Brian Hickey, KCRA 3 News. So Newsom, your governor, essentially said, ah, you don't matter. You don't matter. What matters is our agenda. Okay, well, this is Dr. Richard Penn. And this illustrates how, well, you become a medical tyranny incrementally. You've got these politicians, and that's what Dr. Richard Pan is. I don't give a shit that he's a pediatrician. He's a politician, and he's working the agenda to get everybody vaccinated, all kids. It starts with children, but, well, there is a national vaccine uh, program, and it will come to every adult as well. But this guy's been lying to Californians for years, years. And isn't it interesting that 
when you try to even show, you know, your fellow residents how your state legislators are lying or they try to show your fellow Americans that, yeah, those people like Clinton and Obama and Trump and all of them, they say one thing one year and then, wow, they have a real change of heart in the later years. Like they're saying the opposite? And how does that work? Well, watch Dr. Richard Pan. But this is how they bring it about incrementally. This bill will provide accurate medical information to parents who are considering exempting their children from vaccinations and certainly does not take that choice away from them. Someone decides still vaccine is not for them, that's fine. You know, that's their decision. We're not telling them they can't have that decision. And so for those uh, patients, uh, most likely it's like, okay, well, we had the discussion. I've made my decision. I know we've talked about it. Turn in the, you know, sign the form, turn it in. I've decided not to vaccinate my children. I had patients like that in my own practice. If a physician feels that there's a genetic association and a sibling, a cousin, some other relative, it's not safe for the vaccine, they can provide a medical exemption for that vaccine. There's no limitation. SB 276 restores integrity to medical exemptions and gives state and county health officers the authority to invalidate inappropriate exemptions. There's no limitation, no limitation, no limitation. the physician writes a note to the school saying that there is what's the reason duration which could be indefinite could be forever if that's a, a, a ongoing condition and they sign it and the, and the child now has a medical exemption it is very straightforward uh, very simple signed into law today Listen to this. Thank you so very much, uh, Chair Woods and members, and I uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today and to present SB 276, the bill that is necessary to protect the safety of our children. Thank you for calling Community Health Center. All of our care team representatives are currently busy helping other Community Health Center speaking. I want to be sure every child who needs a medical exemption gets one. That is the part of the purpose of this bill. Be sure every child who needs a medical exemption will get one. Uh, hi, we have some out of state and uh -huh. are trying to enroll in school, but they're saying we need a complete immunization record or a medical mm -hmm. exemption. Mm -hmm. And my son hasn't been vaccinated since he was 12 months because he had an anaphylactic reaction and we had a personal belief exemption where we used to live. But I guess those aren't accepted here. Can we make an appointment to get a medical exemption? Unfortunately, right. at our office, we wouldn't we wouldn't do that for you. Um, no, we don't do that. Our doctors don't do that. So even if my child had a severe reaction, you guys do not write them for any reason. Yeah, correct. Well, this is not going to be the practice. Uh -huh. But don't they say that if a child has anaphylaxis, that's a valid reason to write a medical exemption? 
Right, but our doctors do not write medical exemptions. No, I'm sorry. No. So we have a strict rule that's by our providers in this office specifically that all of the children here are um, immunized without exception. So, uh, this being passed into law, you can kiss away any hope of getting a medical exemption because, well, you can also kiss away your privacy between, you know, physician and patient. Government, government is now, they're the top boss. The buck stops with the public health officials or a registered nurse who's going to review the exemptions. And should a doctor be giving out too many exemptions and those exemptions are found to be inappropriate, well then they have to answer to the California Medical Board. How many doctors do you think will be writing exemptions? Not too many. Not too many. This is tyranny. Government now is, well, not only is it Big Brother, but it's the tyrant who gets to decide. Yeah, you know, that, that this is happening in this country, it's still kind of like shocking to me that more Californians are not standing with all of those who fought hard against this SB 276, it, it's frightening to see the fellow Americans who, I, I don't care that your rights, hey, oh, it's my right too, oh, and I, I lose my freedom. Our government is turning into a tyranny. Oh, that could affect me at some point, but hey, you know, if it does, then maybe I'll get active and, you know, speak out against it. But right now, well, I'm watching a show on the Kardashians. Oh my God. Wow. Well, here, listen to this man. Well, this is an interesting thing that uh, this vaccination is what caused my uh, illness or syndrome or whatever it is. I was a perfectly healthy person, and the only thing I did differently was get a vaccination recommended by my doctor. And now that I have this disease or syndrome or whatever the heck it is, this paralysis, this inability to have any quality of life, it's hard not to think about the decisions of the Governor Brown and Senator Richard pan on the mandatory bill they signed into law requiring children to be vaccinated in order to get a public education. From looking on the internet and from the Mayo Clinic's website, 20,000 people a year are afflicted by this syndrome I have. Our lawmakers recently passed a law that allows vaccines to be mandated, yet the manufacturers have complete immunity of the side effects and damages caused by their vaccines. The fact that Dr. Richard Pan, a pediatrician from the University of California, Davis, hospital located on Stockton Boulevard in Sacramento, California, who runs the pediatric training program there, is an advocate of something that can cause this kind of damage or worse to children is incomprehensible. Not only does he not 
lack any moral character of any kind, but because this law is a primary fiscal benefit to the University of California, who does the research and development of these vaccines, and then gets paid to test these vaccines, and then gets paid to administrate these vaccines. It's a complete cash cow for the university. They bought themselves a senator named Dr. Richard Pan, who used to um, be a community pediatrician whose philosophy at a time when I personally worked for this man as a volunteer for over seven years in the capacity of pediatric training. To have him become a tool and pawn of the university for the sake of generating billions and billions of dollars into the university, which is a direct benefit to the state of California and a direct benefit to the university and the largest contributor to Dr. Richard Pan's Senate campaign. It's all about the money, folks. And they've taken away your right, your obligation to look after your best interests in your family. And they don't mind 10, 20%, 15% of the population being taken out in one way or another through their bad vaccines. It's time for people to exercise their choice as an American to have the say over whether or not the government can inject a foreign substance into you without any repercussions at all. Is as most un-American and unpatriotic as anyone can be. So, even hate speech, man, these people are a piece of work. Tonight, Senator Dr. Richard Pan hosted various groups with the goal of bringing the community together. Now, Dr. Pan has been the target of threats before over his stance on vaccination requirements. Fox 40 Sincere Tonsil was at tonight's forum and joins us live from Sacramento. Good evening, Sincere. Good evening. Now, parents are saying that this senator who's interested in pushing tolerance in the public discourse should start by cleaning up his own Facebook page. What can we do as ordinary people? It was meant to be an evening all about words, a forum on how hate speech damages society. But his host, Senator and Dr. Richard Pan, couldn't have guessed these words would be among them. It just seems extremely hypocritical. When we're talking about hate speech, um, it's a very interesting thing for him to be talking about because if you actually go to his Facebook page, um, you will just see these really hateful comments, people telling us um, that they're going to kill our children in front of us. The us here? Parents against SB 277, the mandatory childhood vaccination bill Pan pushed into law last year. They came out to the California Railroad Museum to push back at Pan about the hostile remarks they say he's let live online for months. This one, your birth was an injury to society. I will be posting your home address as well as personal info. Enjoy. Those are just some of the messages this group says they've seen go undeleted since the governor signed SB 277. It was a debate that brought in death threats to Pan then, now. Yeah, like this one, I, I just wish anti-vaxxers would die. My, my oldest daughter, Ella, um, was injured by the Prevnar vaccine. Kim McCauley is suing the federal government through the National Vaccine Injury Compensation Program about the reactive airway disease Ella has now. Vaccines are bad. They could get you paralyzed like I did. My, my son, uh, at 17 months old, he had a vaccine injury. He has vaccine-induced transverse myelitis. Ooh. So, you know, vaccines are... are my son, uh, at 17 months old, he had a vaccine injury. He has vaccine-induced transverse myelitis. Ooh. 
So, you know, vaccines are, are reprogramming your immune system. Well, his immune system got confused, attacked his spinal cord, and did permanent damage. These families agree to disagree with vaccine supporters, but say the debate shouldn't be threatening. That are concerned about some of the speech you've allowed to exist on your senatorial Facebook page that, you know, is kill the vaxxers and things like that, and they don't understand why you're not pulling that stuff down. Well, look. Extreme, extremist speech is concerning. Trying to, trying to patrol the, uh, a, a social media account, if you've ever tried doing that, is, is very challenging. Pan went on to say he was unaware of any hate speech on his page. Kim McCauley maintains this is just one screen capture proving a death threat lobbed at anti-vaxxers was on the senator's page at 9.50 a.m. Tuesday. Now, parents say many of the comments that they screen captured have actually been deleted as of this afternoon. Reporting live in Sacramento, Sincere Tonsil, Fox 40 News. Boy, so Richard Pan got to it and cleaned up his Facebook page. Wow, they've been deleted. But it was so hard, you know, to manage a social media page. You don't have... Any assistance, Dr. Richard Pan, that could monitor your Facebook page? This is all about getting people to hate those who are going against the agenda. Richard Pan's agenda, uh, government agenda, and... God forbid we stand up, speak out, speak the truth, then we're hateful and we should be deleted. All right, here's the bill on 714, uh, 714 immunizations. The companion bill, 276, and it's, uh, well, lengthy. I read it a lot. Uh, you know, the people, the people of the state of California do enact as follows. Is it really the people? Or, hey, was it Richard Pan and those in the state legislature that voted yay, hey, I, and Governor Newsom, they enacted what follows. And here, uh, you don't, if you have a medical exemption for your child, it ain't grandfathered in until the child enrolls in the next grade span. Those exemptions are going to be reviewed by a government official. Um, if there is good cause to believe that a child has been exposed to a disease and the child's documentary proof of immunization status does not show proof of immunization against that disease, that child may be temporarily excluded from the school or institution until the local health officer is satisfied that the child is no longer at risk of developing or transmitting the disease. Um, and yeah, now it's all going electronic, standardized, statewide medical exemptions certificate, uh, certification form that shall be transmitted directly to the department's California immunization registry. Your privacy's gone between physician and patient. It's gone. Um, the standardized form shall be the only documentation of a medical exemption that the governing authority may accept. At a minimum, the form shall require the following information, the name, California medical license number, business address, telephone number of the physician and surgeon. Physician and surgeon, um, I'm not entirely sure why uh, it's not just physician. Um, but physician and surgeon who issued the medical exemption and of the primary care physician of the child, if different from the physician and surgeon who issued the medical exemption, the name of the child for whom the exemption is sought, the name and address of the child's parent or guardian, 
and the name and address of the child's school or other institution. So it's not only getting rid of medical exemptions now, but it's also developing a registry. <sighs> if the issu issuing physician and surgeon is not the child's primary care physician, the issuing physician and surgeon shall also provide an explanation as to why the issuing physician and not the primary care physician is filling out the medical exemption form, uh, how long the physician and surgeon has been treating the child, a description of the medical basis for which the exemption for each individual immunization is sought, each specific immunization shall be listed separately and space on the form shall be provided to allow for the inclusion of descriptive information for each immunization for which the exemption is sought. Talk about placing a really heavy burden on physicians to write these exemptions now. And you are going to find it's, it's, I can't imagine with this signed into law, I can't imagine doctors who will have the guts, the courage, and doctors who will put up with having to list descriptive information for each immunization for which the exemption is sought. Uh, whether the medical exemption is permanent or temporary, including the date upon which a temporary medical exemption will expire, a temporary ex exemption shall not exceed one year. All medical exemptions shall not extend beyond the grade span. So you then have to go and get repeated medical exemptions authorization for the department to contact the issuing physician and surgeon for purposes of this section and for the release of records related to the medical exemption to the department, the Medical Board of California, the Osteopathic Medical Board of California, a certification by the issuing physician and surgeon that the statements and information contained in the form are, and the form are true, accurate, and complete I guess they took out under the penalty of perjury, which means jailing physicians. Uh, this, I've never seen legislation like this. It almost looks like a draft. Um, and they're cutting out certain aspects of the original that you might want to check into. Uh, issuing physician and surgeon shall not charge for either of the following a physical examination related to the renewal of a temporary medical exemption? Are you kidding? So the government is not only uh, presenting a tremendous burden on physicians to fill out these forms, threatening physicians if they do, if you do sign a medical exemption, we may come after you and, oh, you may get suspensions, we're going to um, file complaints with the medical board in California, but you can't charge for physical examinations related to the renewal of a temporary medical exemption? How many physicians do you know are going to be spending time giving a physical exam examination for, well, a renewal of a medical exemption when they can't even charge for their time? Really? Wow. Okay. Uh, I, the reason why I did this was physician and surgeon. What the hell? All right. Uh, January 1, 2021, the department shall create a standardized system to monitor immunization levels in schools and institutions and to monitor patterns of unusually high exemption form submissions by a particular physician and surgeon a threat right there, right there. Department at a minimum shall annually review immunization reports from all schools and institutions in order to identify medical exemption forms submitted to the department. 
because physicians can't be trusted. <gasps> Neither can parents. Only government now. Huh. Only government can be trusted? Oof. A clinically trained immunization department staff member who is either a physician and surgeon or a registered nurse shall review all medical exemptions from any of the following. A registered nurse? Really? Not even a doctor is going to be reviewing medical exemptions signed by a doctor. That registered nurse now has power over doctors. And yeah, schools or institutions uh, with an overall immunization rate of less than 95%. If you have submitted five or more medical exemptions in a calendar year, beginning January 1, 2020, oh, forget about it. The government's going to be on your case, doctor. All right, uh, look. I will link below to everything. You can read up on all of these threats and, and uh, yeah, government tyranny now uh, taking place. And, yeah, you can appeal, but your child will be suspended from school uh, unless you get that child up to date with the CDC schedule, you can appeal, but do you really think your appeal, are people going to actually win? If the department determines that a physician's and surgeon's practice is contributing to a public health risk in one or more communities, the department shall report the physician and surgeon to the Medical Board of California or the Osteopathic Medical Board of California as appropriate. All links are below. All links are below. But I think more and more are getting rather pissed at what truly is tyranny. It's tyranny, guys. It's tyranny. No more freedom. Your rights are being squashed. We've got tyranny here in the good old U.S. of A. Yes, the beacon of hope. Come here for your freedom and live how you want to live. It's gone. It's gone.